Hi, I'm Dr. Charlie. I'm a lead GP and a senior university clinical educator. In this video, we'll update you on how we should diagnose asthma in primary care based on BTS Sign Guideline 2019. We'll discuss the use of asthma probability tests. We'll explain the use of objective tests, including pheno, spirometry, bronchodilator reversibility, and peak flow variability. Coming right up. Asthma is an inflammatory condition where the airway becomes inflamed, swollen, leading to cough, wheeze, shortness of breath. There is a variable airway obstruction detected over time, and the patient can be asymptomatic between attacks. Nationally, there are many guidelines with different algorithms. NICE and BTS Sign have produced two distinct guidelines over the recent years. There are similarities between this guidance with aims of producing a correct diagnosis. There is no one gold standard test. Diagnosis of asthma is based on clinical assessment with objective tests to influence probability of asthma diagnosis. Traditionally, asthma diagnosis was based on signs and symptoms with demonstrated variable airway obstruction on lung function test. Recent definition include airway inflammation and airway hyperresponsiveness. Objective test for airway obstruction include spirometry, reversibility, peak flow monitoring and challenge test. Test for airway inflammation is usually done with pheno. NICE direct clinician to widespread use of these objective tests, acknowledging the need for service redesign. BTS sign guidance is more pragmatic in primary care setting where most asthma are diagnosed, so it is more sensible to prefer BTS and sign guideline for diagnosis of asthma. Step 1. Assess for asthma probability. There are six signs and symptoms and the more of these, the higher the probability. 1. Recurrent symptoms of cough, wheeze, shortness of breath or chest tightness. 2. Variation of symptoms over time such as days or season. 3. Absence of alternative diagnosis. 4. History of documented wheeze. 5. Personal or family history of a topic condition such as hay fever or eczema and 6. Historical record of peak flow variation. Step 2. If the patient has all of the features or scoring 6 out of 6, they will be considered as having high probability of asthma. You want to initiate trial of inhaled corticosteroid treatment such as clenil to puff twice a day for 6 to 8 weeks. Offer peak flow variability monitoring. Peak flow is an easy lung function test measuring how fast a patient can breathe out. You want to prescribe a peak flow meter and explain to patient how to use. Record the reading as the best of three. Peak flow should be done twice a day for a period between two to six weeks. I will leave you a link to a peak flow diary that you can share with your patient in the description below. Peak flow can also be performed before and after exercise and if you suspect occupational asthma, it can be done before and after work. Peak flow variability is calculated as the difference between the highest and the lowest divided by the highest value over monitoring period multiplied by 100 to give you a percentage. The value of more than 20% variability is positive and support asthma diagnosis. It would be a reasonable idea to start a peak flow diary for a week or two, then start a therapeutic trial with inhaled corticosteroid, then continue peak flow diary for the whole period. A positive test 
would show a flattening of the sawtooth pattern. Be aware that peak flow diary when asthma is inactive is unlikely to show variability. Microspirometry is also available in primary care. When patient is symptomatic, look for an FEV1 change of 200 mL or 12% before and after trial of treatment will also support diagnosis of asthma. Assess response with three short Royal College of Physician questionnaire. Do you have difficulty sleeping because of your asthma symptoms? Do you have asthma symptoms during the day? Does your asthma interfere with your daily activities? So in summary, a patient with high probability of asthma with positive response to trial of treatment with inhaled corticosteroid supported by objective tests such as flattening of the peak flow diary monitoring with confirmed diagnosis of asthma. Step 3. If the patient has some but not all of the typical features of asthma from the initial asthma probability assessment such as scoring between 1 to 5 out of 6 or if they do not respond to initial trial of treatment with inhaled corticosteroid, they should be classified as intermediate probability. Spirometry with bronchodilator reversibility as appropriate is the preferred initial investigation and this is now usually done in the local community lung function hub for quality assurance. Spirometry or lung function test is a measure of how much air being breathed out over a set time and it is best done when the patient is symptomatic. Forced expiratory volume, one second, over forced vital capacity, or FEV1 over FBC of less than 70% suggests airway obstruction and is supportive of asthma. Once the spirometry confirms airway obstruction, you want to perform a bronchodilator reversibility test. This is done by giving patients a butamol inhaler by spacer, then wait around 15 minutes and repeat spirometry. An improvement of FEV1 by 12% with increase in volume of 200 mL or more is positive and is supportive of asthma diagnosis. Measure pheno to detect eosinophil inflammation. Pheno or fractional exhale nitric oxide is a measure of nitric oxide being breathed out. Nitric oxide is produced in the lung when the airway is inflamed. So in asthma, the nitric oxide level will be high. The test is quite simple, involving breathing into a mouthpiece attached to a handheld monitor. Phenol level of more than 40 in adult over 18 is supportive of asthma. And the level between 25 and 39 is intermediate. You may also see persistent raised eosinophil level of more than 0.4, which shows inflammation and would also be supportive of asthma diagnosis. Spirometry, bronchodilator reversibility and pheno are not perfect and can be affected by many factors. The patient may be asymptomatic at the time of the test. The use of inhaled corticosteroid can affect the results. Smoking, coffee, alcohol or even consumption of green vegetable can affect phenol reading. If spirometry is normal, consider referral to secondary care for challenge test. In primary care, we don't usually do histamine or metacholine direct challenge test, but can be performed in secondary care if asthma diagnosis remains uncertain. Once the spirometry is performed, you want to code this patient as suspected asthma. You then want to commence trial of treatment with inhaled corticosteroid and then start peak flow monitored as mentioned previously. A good response to treatment supported by RCP questionnaire and peak flow diary would be supportive of asthma diagnosis. A poor response can be seen in suspected asthma. A strategy of watchful waiting when asymptomatic and repeat assessment 
when symptomatic again. Asthma defining features is variable airway obstruction caused by bronchoconstriction. The test can be challenging with normal objective tests when a patient is asymptomatic. We think around more than half of the patient with normal spirometry will have asthma. Step 4. Patient who does not have typical features of asthma or scoring 0 out of 6 on the initial asthma assessment would have low probability of asthma. Investigate for alternative diagnosis. Consider referral to secondary care if diagnosis remains uncertain or from previous step if the patient has poor response to trial of treatment. Refer patient with suspected occupational asthma and those patients with severe or life-threatening asthma attack. Some of the red flags indicator for other diagnosis are 1. Prominent systemic feature such as fever, myalgia, weight loss. 2. Unexpected finding such as cyanosis, clubbing, stridor. 3. Unexplained restrictive spirometry. 4. Persistent non-variable breathlessness. 5. Chronic sputum production. 6. Chest x-ray shadowing. And 7. Marked elevated eosinophil. We will discuss asthma management in future video. Thank you for watching this video and why don't you check out a video I made on hypertension diagnosis and hypertensive emergency. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my GP Team Academy channel and until next time.